also gotten careers, not jobs, once they go through his program. And he's working with different nonprofit organizations to expand that beyond bricklaying to iron working. All this beautiful architecture I talked about that was built in the 1880s, 1890s, we gotta train people to be able to take care of it and do it. And you're not training people for a job, you're training people for a career. And people like Steve get it. This is the treasures. That is the beauty. You can't find this in Houston. This is part of our past that we have to fix. We don't tear this down. We hire those folks to go in and we teach people how to put in windows, how to do roofing, how to do plumbing, how to hang drywall. And we give people a career. There's a great organization in Homewood called the Homewood Renaissance Association that's doing that. We need to put them on steroids. That's what it should look like when we're done. And imagine a city that is like this. Pittsburgh is there. We just don't see it because we're so used to this that we don't think this could become this again. It can. Union membership, the bigger issue. We have to understand that those like my grandfather that stood up and said, hey, I may only have a second grade education. You may not consider what I do to be skilled, but I'm working 40, 50 hours a week and I deserve to be able to get into the middle class. That same opportunity has to be there for service employees, the people that are working in the hospitals, the people that are working in the drugstores, the people that are making your bed at the hotel. They need to have that same opportunity. If they're working 40 hours a week, Pittsburgh should be a city that makes sure that they're living in a lifestyle, that they don't need public assistance for transportation. They don't need public assistance for housing. They don't need public assistance for food. How is that a good economic development model? And why would it make sense for us to invest tax dollars behind developments that support that. We gotta make sure that the people, when we invest our tax dollars, are benefiting not just the brick and mortar of the building, but the people who are working inside of it as well. There's your new industry. Early education for all children. Graduation rate. It's not something else we don't talk about. It's actually worse when you look at certain neighborhoods and when you look at males compared to females within the city. This is what we've been doing to solve it, cutting funding to education on a statewide level. We know that a majority of kids are not receiving any early childhood and what, that re what we realize is by the time that they start in school, they're already at a disadvantage. The ones that are dropping out, more than likely, are the ones that never had an opportunity for early childhood. The ones that we read about that get a gun are probably the ones that are dropping out. And then we try to solve it at that point. We've got to solve it early on. We've got to solve it so that every kid has an opportunity starting out and on an almost equal or equal basis. And that means we have to invest more into early childhood education. This is just some statistics that uh, pretty much show how important it is to be able to break the cycle of poverty to invest early into people. And the problem is, is that we live in a culture right now on a federal level where everything with the word public is evil. Public infrastructure, public schools, Anything, anything that talks about investing of all our dollars is looked at in a negative way. And what we don't understand is that's the only way that we break these cycles. And then the government must rise to the challenge. We're gonna be creating within our uh, new administration an entire new bureau. It's called the Bureau of Special Projects and it's gonna work hand in hand with our foundation community because it's time that we get back with them and help us like they did during the 80s and the 90s. But it's not gonna be about building a cultural district, it's gonna be about looking at our lowest income areas of the city. So hopefully we'll get the funding done before the end of this year. But we'll be creating a new officer in the mayor's office who will be the chief urban affairs officer. And their role will be simply to look in our lowest income areas to be able to go into two areas that we haven't before in city government. We don't have anybody who's an ombudsman for education. So we'll have somebody who will be working with Pittsburgh Public Schools, with workforce training, with groups like Steve Shelton's to make sure that there are opportunities and there's coordination and there's resources being brought to the table from the city to be able to make sure we have more than just a Pittsburgh promise, but an opportunity to make sure that people have a chance. 
and then we're going to reach out to our nonprofit and our faith-based institutions. So many of our churches want to be involved in workforce development. They want to be involved in rebuilding neighborhoods, but we say no because we can't work with them because they're faith-based. That's really more of an excuse than a legal argument. We may not be able to invest dollars, but we can invest a lot of other resources to help them to help to rebuild the community. This office becomes about empowerment. And then this is about all the good things that are happening right now in the city and how this can then help this. How do we start to get tech firms to look at places like Allentown to give them an opportunity for a year's free rent if they move there so we can start to rebuild the neighborhood business district? How do we look at housing initiatives in Manchester and not just do one or two houses but start doing a hundred houses at a time to start investing back? So when we start thinking about in that industrial age and that renaissance age where we put our money into big, big development and structure now we start thinking small, and the small is how you start to rebuild these neighborhoods. And that is the future of Pittsburgh. <laughs>